Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault presented by Blinzall. If you're in the market for some high-quality racing oil for your two-stroke or four, make sure you go to Blinzall.com and use our discount code VAULT20 to save 20% at checkout. Thank you for all the support. Hey guys, this is Brad Gebhardt, and you're watching the Motocross Vault. Hello and welcome back to the Motocross Vault. My name is Tony Blazer, and what this video is going to cover is a look back at one of the most popular machines of the early 90s, the 1994 Honda CR250. Now, when you think back of this machine, I think most people will think of Jeremy McGrath, certainly. Uh, this is really a great era for Honda in terms of dominance in motocross. They were pretty much waxing everybody every year. Uh, I think these bikes, you know, they're super popular now to restore. Partly, there's a bit of a Honda cachet, but there's also the, the cachet of all those winning machines, all those winning years. Everybody wants to do a you know McGrath replica, maybe a stand replica if you're doing like a 92 or something. Uh, but these are really great bikes in some ways, but they weren't perfect. They certainly, maybe a lot of these years weren't even the best bike. In 94, a lot of people would say the Kawasaki was actually the best machine to have. Had way better suspension than the Honda. Uh, the Honda suspension was just terrible this year, uh, but it still had a great motor. And I think, again, because there was so much winning being done at the pro level, people think the bike was probably now in hindsight better than it actually was at the time. But I remember it. I, I loved these bikes in 94. Um, when they first went to the nuclear red plastic and the new all-new look in 92, I hated it. I had a 90. Um, I didn't like the change from the orange to the pinkish red. Uh, but by 94, it had totally grown on me. And of all this era of from 92 through 96, this is my favorite one in terms of the looks. I didn't really care for the change to the side plates they did in 95, and this is like the last of that generation. I like the graphics this year. I ended up actually doing my 90 and making it look like a 94. I put, you know, like the nuclear red plastic on it, had a white tank, and put the 94 graphics on my 90, and it, uh, even though it was obviously not an exact replica, it fooled a lot of people. People would ask me about it, but uh, I think this is a good-looking motorcycle and a really great bike. I said a lot of people I know, this is maybe, um, you know, I'm not probably not alone in thinking this is my favorite of them. I know a lot of people prefer the 96, but uh, this 94 is a good-looking motorcycle over Overall, I'd say um, this video is going to cover a little bit about how it uh, stacked up in 94 but if you're a fan of Honda motorcycles in general you can check out I've done many other videos including a complete history of the CR250 I've, I've covered the CR250 from its inception in 1973 till its retirement in 2007 I went year by year model by model talk a little bit about how one uh, each one changes it's such a long video I divided it into two uh, it's probably I don't know three hours long probably if you <laughs> look at the whole thing but uh, if you are interested in the history of the CR250 you can check that you can find that on my channel and then check it out I've done other many other videos including off-road bikes like the Honda XRs uh, mini Kawasaki Yamaha even KTM's Husqvarna's I'm pretty agnostic as far as off-road stuff I even covered some ATV so if you like that sort of thing make sure you check out some of the other videos on my channel I have a lot of different ones available if you'd like to support what I do here, I have a lot of uh, Motocross Vault merch available, including several Honda designs. I did one for uh, a buddy of mine with the uh, awesome GMC Cyclone. Uh, if you're a fan of this design of uh, Honda CR, I think that one turned out really well. It's pretty cool. I also have an evolution of Honda design where showing kind of the iconic machines and how they changed over the years. And that's available, of course, in posters and stickers and shirts and what have you. Uh, you can find all that stuff on my Teespring store. Uh, I will put a link in the uh, description below and also a card here in the video. So here, without further ado is the history of the 1994 Honda CR250R. When most longtime moto enthusiasts think of Honda in the early 90s, one name comes to mind, Jeremy McGrath. In 1993, McGrath moved up to the 250 class after back-to-back -back 125 Supercross titles on the peak Honda Pro Circuit squad and immediately asserted himself as the man to beat in the deuce and a half division. His much-anticipated duels with reigning champ Jeff Stanton and Yamaha superstar Damon Bradshaw never really materialized as the rookie sensation dominated his way to 10 wins in his first 250 Supercross title. At the time, this marked Honda's sixth straight Supercross championship in the Premier Division. Add in four additional 250 National Motocross crowns over the same time span, and you have the very definition of motocross domination. During this impressive run of championships, the one common denominator was Honda's venerable CR250R. Rick Johnson, Jeff Stanton, John michel Bale, and Jeremy McGrath all used the power of Honda's blisteringly fast late 80s and early 90s 250s to pull them to the front. Faster in stock condition than most other manufacturers' modified machines, the CRs of this era were a huge advantage to those talented enough to make the full use of their potential. In 1993, this had been the case with Honda's CR250R. Its motor was acknowledged by all as the best in the class, but its ultra-aggressive handling and harsh suspension were more polarizing. The fork and shock settings that pleased hammerheads like Jeff Stanton left most mere mortals with sore wrists and bruised backsides, 
and its penchant for breaking into vicious headshake when coming down from speed soured more than a few riders on the Honda's other charms. Wicked fast and hyper-aggressive, the 1993 CR250 was a nearly perfect supercross weapon that lost some of its appeal once the tracks got rough and the speeds increased. For 1994, Honda's goal was to broaden the CR's appeal by toning down its supercross focus and improving its chassis comfort. In order to accomplish this, Honda's engineers scrapped the 93 chassis and designed an all-new frame and suspension package for 1994. The new chassis aimed to improve stability by lengthening the wheelbase, changing the weight distribution, and altering the steering geometry. In order to accomplish this, Honda moved the motor up and forward 5mm and repositioned the steering stib down 3mm and rearward 7mm. A new longer and stronger swing arm extended the wheelbase 12mm, and new gussing throughout the frame changed the flex points to improve chassis feel and precision. To further refine the riding position, the bar mounts were moved 6mm rearward, and the foot pegs were repositioned 10mm back and 10mm up. In addition to changing the bar mount position, the new clamps also altered the chassis geometry by reducing the steering offset by 2mm. The bodywork remained unchanged from 1993, aside from a new bolder yellow CR graphic for the shrouds. On the suspension front, Honda chose to scrap their 1993 fork entirely and go with an all-new design. The new Shawa 43mm cartridge fork did away with the tapered design of 93 and added a 2mm larger cartridge rod and a new oil lock system designed to reduce bottoming. The fork's stanchion tubes were 20mm shorter for 94 in an effort to reduce stiction. This necessitated the installation of small guides at the bottom of each stanchion to prevent the lower fork guard from catching on the new shorter fork tubes. Travel was set at 12.2 inches and the fork offered 16 positions for compression and 20 positions for rebound adjustability. In the rear, the 1994 CR250R featured an all-new ProLink system with revised ratios and an upgraded components. Both the hem joints and linkage bolts were beefed up to improve durability, and a new linkage curve was installed to provide a more progressive action. The Shawa shock was similar to the one used in 1993, but new valving and a slightly stiffer spring looked to improve its action. The damper offered 22 positions for compression and 20 adjustments for rebound to go with its 12.2 inches of travel. On the motor front, Honda chose to focus solely on refinement for 1994. Originally introduced in 1992, Honda's composite racing valve, or CRV, motor had proved to be one of the most potent in the sport. It was less smooth than the older Honda Powerport mills, used from 1986 through 1991, but far more potent from the mid-range on up. For 1994, Honda looked to improve throttle response by altering the intake and exhaust ports slightly and massaging the reed valve. They also added a new work-style venting system to the carburetor that prevented it from vapor locking when landing from jumps. While not aimed at improving power, the silencer was also enlarged for 1994 to give the machine a less raspy note. On the track, all of these changes added up to a bit of a mixed bag for 1994. As in the previous five years, the CR's motor remained its strongest asset. The 249cc mill produced the longest and strongest power spread in the class. The minor porting and reed changes for 1994 allowed the motor to pick up cleaner off the bottom and run on pump gas without the pinging some riders had noticed in 1993. This stronger low-end response and smoother transition to the mid-range made the bike easier to ride, but no less potent, and it continued to offer the meatiest mid-range power and strongest top-end pull in the class. There was usable power available at virtually any point on the curve, and the motor was both easy to manage and brutally effective. Add in a bulletproof clutch and excellent shifting, and you had by far the best motor package available in the 1994 250 class. Where things went a bit astray for the CR in 1994 was in the handling and suspension categories. In 1993, the CR 250 had offered the sharpest turning on the track. The Red Ripper turned circles around most of its rivals and awarded aggression with beautiful arcs of precision. The flip side to this, however, had been its epically nasty head shake when coming down from speed. The combination of the CR's aggressive geometry and subpar suspension created a perfect storm of instability that was violent enough to tear the rider's hands clean off the bars once the front end started shaking. For Supercross champs like Jeremy McGrath, this was a worthy trade, but for the average Joe at Chicken Licks Raceway, the CR's wandering nature could be a handful. For 1994, Honda's chassis changes were aimed at toning down this epic oscillation while not hurting the machine's legendary turning. In this, they were only partially successful. The new chassis did provide a small increase in stability over 93, but the bike remained very busy when coming down from speed. Where some riders were less enthusiastic was in the steering response of the new chassis. Compared to machines like the 94 KX and YZ, the CR remained a scalpel, but when you rode it back to back with the 93 CR, the 94 version felt far less precise. The changes to the wheelbase, geometry, and weight bias all gave the front end a less planted feel, and more concentration was required to hold a line the 93 could have executed easily. 
For many riders, this trade-off was a welcome one, but most fast guys preferred the more aggressive feel of the 93 chassis. On the suspension front, the opinions were far more unanimous. Put frankly, no one liked the new forks on the 94 CR250. The 43mm shawls were undersprung, underdamped, and harsh in action. They hung down in the stroke and pummeled the rider's wrist in the rough. Big jumps also taxed the fork's new bottoming system and usually resulted in a substantial thud. If you upped the spring rate and lowered the fork oil height slightly, their action went from grim to moderately livable, but they remained by far the worst forks on the track in 1994. In the rear, the outlook was not nearly as hopeless. The stock spring was probably a bit too soft for anyone fast or over 150 pounds, but its action was pretty decent overall. Like the forks, bottoming could be an issue for bigger and faster riders, but the overall performance of the shock was much smoother than the front forks. Some riders also commented that the shock seemed more sensitive to track changes than any of the others in the class and required constant fiddling to find the right settings. Overall, the shock was a slight improvement over 1993, but far from the best damper available at the time. On the detailing front, the 1994 CR offered class-leading performance in most areas. Its brakes were the strongest and most trouble-free in the class. They offered excellent power, great feel, and never needed bleeding. The additional red pigment added to the nuclear red plastic in 1993 made it much less prone to sun fading than the original 92 version, but the bodywork remained less durable than older Honda designs. Any sort of crash would leave ugly white creases in the red fenders, and the white tank and airbox were perpetually dingy and in need of scrubbing to remove the marks left by the rider's boots. Overall fit and finish were excellent, with the CR offering the best grips, most durable components, and highest quality fasteners in the class. Reliability was also class leading, with the CR offering a bulletproof motor that ran forever as long as you did not allow dirt to make its way into the intake. Unfortunately, however, this turned out to be one of the CR's few foibles in 1994. If you do not disassemble the air boot and air box and carefully clean and reseal everything, small particles of debris can make their way into the intake. The stock DID rims were pretty soft as well, and not up to the pounding of a hard charging rider. For them, a switch to a stronger Takasago XL rim was advisable. Lastly, some riders were not a fan of the new bar and foot pick placement for 1994. The revised layout was more cramped for taller riders, and most of them opted for a taller bar and Honda's optional taller saddle. Overall, the 1994 CR250 turned out to be a slightly mellowed out version of the machine that had dominated Supercross the year before. The motor was smoother and the handling was less aggressive, but the bike remained a serious machine for serious racers. With its busy chassis, powerful motor, and harsh suspension, it remained a pro-level bike in need of a little polish for the common man. If you were looking for an off-the-shelf winner, the KX or YZ may have made more sense, but if you were in search of a machine that had the pedigree and potential to dominate the standings, the 1994 Honda CR250R was the bike to beat. So there you have it. That's a look back at the 1994 Honda CR250R, a machine that dominated racing again in 94. A uh, really good bike, certainly on the track in terms of professional motocross. Uh, if, you, if you're going to race it yourself, you probably need to have the suspension worked on a little bit. My buddy actually had the 94 125, and I liked the bike a lot, but the suspension was just not great on that bike either. Um, it was, you know, I, for my weight particularly, it was a little soft. Uh, I didn't think it, it handled that all that well in terms of the suspension action, but the motor was awesome and the turning was great. And I think the 250 is very similar. Uh, I actually never had this uh, 92 to 94. I ended up buying a 96 uh, a few years later after this. I quite like that motorcycle. Uh, the 96 was awesome. The motor definitely in this era, it, it was one of the best engines available. It was just an awesome power plant. Honda would use this basic motor design up through, I believe, 2001 was the last year when they would finally retire and go to the Case Reed engine in, in uh, 2002. So um, it really was the strength of the bike over this time. The suspension, they really never got it sorted out until maybe in the 2000s. So none of these 90s bikes had great stock suspension. But if you have one now, you certainly can get Race Tech or somebody to sort it out. And then you have just a phenomenal motorcycle. Uh, they're great bikes overall in general, and um, you know, I, 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 it's weird that Honda could never figure out how to get the suspension done. They would, they would swap. They go from Shawa to Kiaba and completely redesign it every year, and yet it just never worked very well. <laughs> I don't know what was going on over there, but in any case, people love them. They're great, popular bikes to restore now, and uh, certainly if you have one, I'm sure you're very happy with it. So, uh, again, if you like this sort of thing, make sure you check out some of the other videos I've done on the channel. If you'd like, subscribe and share on social media. I would very much appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment below. Let me know kind of what you'd like me to do next. Uh, I have a bunch more uh, videos in the hopper I'm working on. So I'm always working on a bunch of stuff. It takes a while to do these. But um, I promise I will get to the bike you want eventually. So uh, until we meet again, this is Tony Blazer for the Motocross Vault. Keep the rubber side down. Peace.